Hello and welcome back to the Armour Men's Health Hour. Show. Show. We used to only have an hour, but now we have a show. <laughs> We're really getting a lot better. I'm Dr. Mystery, your host, board certified urologist, all around Great adequate guy. person. Uh, I'm joined by my co-host, Donnelly. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the show. Dr. Mystery is an all-around great guy. And I love it when our patients uh, come in and tell us how much you make the show. I really don't think that's true. When you let me talk, I'm very entertaining. <laughs> it can be very funny. When I, you, when I, guess you let I've me learned. I guess I've learned. <laughs> this show is brought to you by NAU Urology Specialist, the urology group I started in 2007. Donna, how do people get a hold of us? You reach out to us at armormenshealth.com or call us at 512-238-0762. And our website again, armormenshealth.com. We're in Round Rock, North Austin, South Austin, and Dripping Springs. We're once again joined by one of my former professors and really an amazing mentor for me, Dr. Ricardo Gonzalez from Houston Methodist Urology Associates. Ricardo, thank you for joining us again. You bet. It's my pleasure. So in our last segment, what we talked about were kind of traditional ways that we've approached an enlarged prostate with medication and probably the most commonly known um, a surgery, which is the TURP, where we go in there and scrape the prostate to open it up. And over the last several years, you've uh, really helped pioneer some of the most amazing new tech. I mean, just in my own uh, remembrance, uh, you helped uh, do a lot of research into the green light laser. You helped uh, do a lot of the studies in promoting Eurolift and now aquablation. Um, maybe you could just tell us what is the philosophy on new procedures and, yeah. uh, and how do you decide and advise people <clears throat> on what to do next? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the field changes rapidly. And now my current conversation is one of four buckets. The first bucket of treatment potential is behavioral changes. Like if you become a vegan or limit red meat, that might help. But most people are presenting, if they're in front of you as a urologist, they already have more problems than that. The second bucket of treatment options would be medications. And we've spoken a little bit about the side effects of that and that they may not resolve the problem. And patients tend up and to end up presenting later with maybe more serious problems because they've kind of kicking the can down the road to another treatment. So then the last two buckets are one of office-based treatments versus surgeries, which in general for prostate enlargement are non-invasive. Um, so the options in the office are three right now. We have Eurolift, which is a stapler that we use to tack the prostate out to the sides. We have Resume, which is a steam-based treatment that, that might take about three months to work, but doesn't leave any implants in the, in, in the prostate. And then the third is something called iTint, which is a temporary device that you put in the prostate. It expands over five to seven days. There's no catheter required, and that's removed uh, in the office a week later. Um, and that those are kind of for men who are still responding to medicines, maybe their tamsulosin still helps, but they don't want to take a pill or they don't like the side effects of a pill. And in those men, the bucket of these minimally invasive office procedures becomes, becomes a, a choice. And for many patients, the idea of doing the procedure in the office without a general anesthetic are very appealing. And then you also have the benefit of reducing some side effects. All three of these have a pretty low risk of bleeding. They're both, all of them are quick. I mean, uh, an ITIN takes me about 45 seconds. The resume takes about what, three minutes. And then you probably do a year lift in about uh, 45 minutes, right? You're pretty, uh, I, I remember you not being that great in the opera. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for, uh, I, I forgot that you had amnesia. I forgot, <laughs> but uh, no, they're, they're all really rapid. I would tell you that two of those three options don't leave an implant. And in my experience, most men are interested in not, you know, in, in, in kind of, I don't want to say more natural, but, but uh, resume and I tend to become a little more popular. Right. So you're uh, saying in that practice. in your practice, the, 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 when you use the Eurolift, you do have that little titanium, that little nitinol, little clips that do stay in there. Uh, now, for the most part, they don't bother anybody, yeah, uh, yeah. But, uh, but sometimes people have the idea of not wanting to keep an implant in them. And then yeah, if people yeah. want something in the operating room, uh, you know, besides the traditional procedure where we use a loop to cut the tissue out, uh, which I still do quite a bit of, honestly, um, uh, well, what are some of the things that you offer? Yeah. So, so most of what 
most of what I do is either laser prostatectomy, which is enucleation with different laser energies, or a new treatment called aquablation. And I'm going to just focus a little bit on how they differ from TURP. So TURP is a, is a loop that's like a hot wire that can cut and then cauterize at the same time, but you're kind of boring from the inside out um, and, and kind of trying to take down a wall without being really certain what's on the other side. And so um, it has limited us a little bit in, in terms of uh, safety because you can't see what's on the other side of the wall you're trying to take down. And with experience like you, you're going to, you're going to have less side effects that may be a newer user who is spreading their experience over a bunch of technologies and might have less experience with that traditional procedure that used to be considered the gold standard. Now we so, do know what's on the other side of that wall. There's some big blood vessels that can bleed. Yeah, I, that's the least of it. Are, that's right. And the blood vessels that take blood to the penis and, and, and help you know, like if you're cauterizing a lot out there, then then if there's a lot of burning that can happen there. Then you can damage ejaculatory ducts and the nerves that help you have an erection. So That's having things that limit saw. heat and are more precise limit those side effects. We saw when we were in training, uh, you know, a lot of very, very high energy. So kind of to limit these problems, companies used to just come up with bigger and bigger and bigger energy sources and then eventually we found that erectile dysfunction was more likely because you're just kind of blasting a Thor-like hammer at the blood vessels. And that wasn't the, the, the direction that we wanted to go in. So then the laser started hitting the, uh, the market, which is very appealing to all of our techie listeners out there. Tell me more about the laser. So th there's in general two classes of laser, uh, one that cuts very well and one that can vaporize well. And the laser is not the technique. So, so for example, green light is green. It's absorbed by the opposite color, which is red. And what's red in the prostate is blood. And the prostate tends to be a bloody organ. So that's a laser of choice that I use. If a patient is on blood thinners or at high risk of bleeding, I'll use a light that is absorbed by red to limit that bleeding risk. And then depending on the size of the prostate, if it's small, you can use it to vaporize, which means turn something from solid into gas. So we just kind of make it disappear and sculpt out the inside of the prostate to help them urinate better. As prostates get bigger, it's more like carving an orange, the meat of an orange off of the rind. So you're separating the, the, the tissue you want to remove from the outside rind that, that um, contains the critical structures we're trying to preserve. So that's called an enucleation. And I do that with green light, but also with a cutting laser called holmium. So enucleations are done with, with two different laser energies or more. There's, there's thulium as well. These are all different techniques. And so it's up to the surgeon to decide, hey, what are my goals for this patient? What are his risk factors? And then using the right tool for the right job so you limit side effects. But hopefully we're going to talk about aquablation as well. Absolutely. So more recently, I've been doing quite a few aquablations, and you were my proctor for those first few cases. Uh, to, to tell me what it is and how you describe it to people. Yes, perfect. So earlier we were talking about the limitation of kind of carving through a wall and not seeing the other side. Um, aquablation is our first image-guided robotic procedure for BPH. So by image-guided we actually can see the prostate along the long axis and the, the short axis. So we can see it in multiple dimensions uh, with an ultrasound probe that's placed behind the prostate during the operation. The robotic treatment arm is passed through the urethra, so there's no cuts. The patient is asleep, and, and we position the treatment arm within the prostate. Then we map out the part of the prostate that we would like to remove. And when I step on the pedal, the robot cuts along the lines that I that we predetermined. So we we tell it what we want to remove. When we have very good visualization of what we want to preserve, we can see where the seminal vesicles come in, where the ejaculatory ducts pass through the prostate, and we can actually preserve that because we can see it. And we can actually see the robot as it does the cutting. And the cutting is done not with heat. It's done with a high-pressure saline jet that's about 8,000 PSI. So it's the same kind of jets that are used to cut pipes and carve stone and cut chicken nuggets into the shape of dinosaurs. So it is the most amazing type of technology that allows us to really 
and it varies very consistent in how deep the cuts go uh, a lot because you can see it in real time, which is something that we, you know, I, I never would have imagined uh, a decade ago. That's right. And the fact that a robot can do it, it's, it's almost like a laser printer. So if I do a laser by hand, it takes me a minute per gram. So if someone has about an 80 gram prostate, they're going to be under anesthesia 80 minutes. If it's 150 grams, we're going to be in there more than two hours doing that prostate. But aquablation standardizes it because the robotic portion is truly automated. It's not like Da Vinci, which is a robot assistance of a surgery. This is we we the human plans it, but it is automated. The robot actually does that active part of removing the tissue, and it can do it quickly. I will tell you that most uh, most cases are what we call a two pass procedure, which is roughly about eight minutes for the active surgical part. After which we do remove the robot, go in and check, remove kind of the prostate slushy, and and you know pinpoint cauterize any active bleeding. What are some of the side effects that we expect aquablation to avoid? Correct, because we can see the the anatomy better, both through the middle of the prostate and outside of the prostate, by preserving the ejaculatory hood. The risk of retrograde or dry ejaculation is about ten percent. So that's a lot lower than we have with our other surgical procedures, Which is like a hundred percent. Yeah, usually. yeah. Well, depending on what you use, but yeah, it's it's on the spectrum from zero to one hundred. Um, the the other thing is the patient will have less anesthesia because they're going to be, you know, it's I, I think the recovery is just faster. And since we're not just burning and leaving a lot of cauterized tissue in there, I find that there's less burning. Uh, urgency frequency after the the procedure, uh, and 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 a lot of patients feel like they're just fine that next week. And I remind them for a couple of weeks, you're not supposed to lift heavy things or strain. Uh, and I, I tell them you're going to feel like you can do everything, but just kind of take it easy a couple of weeks. You can work and drive and have your normal activities, but nothing extra. This is your ticket to not be taking out the trash or or. Uh, we're doing any, or doing any work. work at home. Uh, my, That's right. my wife that I've had my prostate operated on every day for the last 13 years. <laughs> every day. Uh, Ricardo, I cannot thank you enough for joining us. Uh, once again, what is your phone number and the name of your practice? Oh, you bet. So Ricardo Gonzalez at Houston Methodist Urology, 713-441-6455. Can't thank you enough for joining us today. You're just one of you my bet. favorite professors and somebody that I look up to and if you have questions, please email us. Thank you so much. You Carl. bet. Thank you, Dr. Mystery. Donna, bye. Bye.